Hey, what's up, and welcome to live.besttechie.net, the place where we talk tech, answer your tech questions, of course, everything technology related. Today's a special day. Uh, the Apple event was today, April 8th, Thursday, and uh, they released the new iPhone operating system 4.0. Well, they announced it, they haven't released it fully, but it is in developer preview. And before we get into the video, I just want to mention that operation confidence going well. I last on Tuesday when I, when I weighed myself, I lost five and a half pounds so far. So doing good there. So I'm still able to do the videos. Thank God, because I really wanted to do this video today. Um, so let's just hop over to the iPhone and uh, let's. Sh I'm going to show it off. Show uh, do a quick overview of some of the new features involved that are, that are in the new iPhone operating system. All right. So first of all, let's launch it. First thing you'll notice is it looks you know, essentially the same. So let's unlock it. And now you'll notice that the same background that I had on the lock screen is actually on my home screen as well, which is pretty cool. Now, that's number one. So number one, you can go to the settings. I'm gonna go to my settings. And you can change here under wallpaper the uh, the wallpaper that you have. So I have, my, I have some in my photo library. I'll just set a new one just so you guys can see this. So I'm going to go to this icon, I'm going to click set, just like normal, but now it says you have the option to set for home screen and for lock screen, and or you can set for both. So I'm going to set for both, so that means, by the way, what that means is you can have individual uh, wallpapers for the home screen and the lock screen, you can have one for each if you wanted. I'm just going to set for both, it's done, I'm going to go out here, and you'll notice the brand new wood looking actually that looks better I like that um, icon I mean wallpaper for the iPhone OS very cool that's number one um, number two before I get to the really good stuff let's go to some of the other stuff here uh, mail has been improved so now mail has a what they call unified inbox I have two e I have two emails account two email accounts set up in my iPhone I have a couple more I just haven't added them um, so what this allows you to do is you can actually input, uh, it'll, it'll gather all the email from all the accounts and input it into one single inbox, which is really nice um, and nifty if you, if, if you like to have your mail all in one place. Again, you can go to the individual mailboxes as well. It also offers some functionality now, which I can't do um, because I can't show because I don't have any uh, additional apps installed to like view, let's say PDFs or things like that. But if you want, you can actually get options now in the iPhone OS 4.0 to open up, let's say, a file in a, in a, as an attachment in a separate app if you want, if you had something installed to do that. That's another thing, which is pretty nice. The other thing, uh, the other feature that I really liked was now this is killer because as as many people know, the iPhone has the ability to have apps. That's one of the really cool things about the iPhone. They've really done a nice job with apps. Developers have created some awesome apps. Here's the thing. Apps, what happens is apps, they become that you get so many of them installed on your on your iPhone, it becomes really tedious and really a really big job to just manage all of them. So what they did, what Apple did was they created a way for you to create what they call folders. And these folders have smart naming capabilities. So I have a couple apps over here in the bottom that I didn't group into folders. So I had four pages of apps and I combined all my apps, most of them at least, into folders and now I have one page with a bunch of folders and the apps are in them. So let's show the folders first before I do anything else. So here's my social folder. If I open that you'll notice that it pops up a new uh, little part on the home screen and it includes my Foursquare app, my Facebook, my Ustream Broadcaster, Tweety, Dig, and Flickr. Now if I want to go back, I just click away. Now let's say I wanted to go to, I don't know, what's a good app? Uh, let's go to Productivity. So here I have my Calendar, my Notes, my WordPress, App, uh, Appbox Pro, LogMe and Ignition, Google, Dropbox, I can just go back. And here I have a uh, Utilities app, I have a bunch of apps in my Utilities one. Uh, as you can see, very cool. I'm just going to be a better view. So this is what it looks like. You can get a better view here, right here. Very cool, and it's very clean looking. The other thing was, so how how exactly do you create these folders? I wasn't sure originally. Uh, I had to look it up. So here's how you do it. You 
press down so make the icons all squiggly. Once they're squiggly, you then drop it one icon onto another one and it'll create the new thing. And it'll even automatically name it based on what uh, the app is, what the apps you're putting together are. It'll have a smart naming configuration. This one's called productivity. You can of course rename it if you want. So let's just call it uh, M, oops, it's hard to see. M, I, S, C for miscellaneous. So just go like that, click done, click the home button. And that's it. Now they'll have a miscellaneous folder. You can also put folders in your dashboard. I mean, I'm sorry, your springboard. And that's really cool. So I have a bunch of messaging apps here in my springboard. And as you'll notice, the new uh, springboard, instead of it ha being like a, uh, it looks like a, a graded uh, metal mesh thing, this now actually looks more like an actual dock, which is pretty cool. So I have, so that's really nice. Now here's another thing that was introduced, and this is a big one. Uh, I know you're all saying like, what about multitasking? What about you know background apps, things like that? They included it. Now it's kind of, it's not a full on uh, background application thing, but it is, it is pretty good and it does the job. Uh, I can't fully show it off because, ma namely because the apps aren't fully, uh, the apps that are, gonna, that are will support it, meaning most of them, if not all of them soon enough, once this is fully released in the summer, either probably June or July, they're not available in the App Store yet, so they don't have. You actually have to edit your application in order to support background processes and multitasking. But in order to show this off, how you would do it? So you would double tap on the, uh, you will double click the home button, and it will bring up your recently used applications. So. I've used Foursquare recently, I've used my messaging app and system preferences, you saw me use that, and mail you saw me use that. All you have to do is then tap it and boom. And then if you wanted to go back, oh that's the same app. Here, let me go to let's go to mail. Let's say I'm in mail and I want to switch to Foursquare. Double click, click Foursquare, that's it. Now what'll be really cool is eventually if you're like if you use Pandora, let's say, you will be able to use Pandora and surf the web on Safari. No problems. Uh, that, that's one of the nice things that'll be included with the multitasking. So you'll be able to do that. Skype, you'll, another thing they mentioned was Skype will be able, will have background processing capabilities. So you'll be able to be in uh, on like another app and then have a Skype call come in. It'll notify you. You can answer the call. Go check your email or while you're on the call, just like if you were calling someone on the regular iPhone using the iPhone call app. So it's very nifty in that sense. It works perfectly. Uh, I would assume it looked more like it worked perfectly. I can't tell for sure, obviously, but it looks like it could work perfectly. Uh, let me just see if there's anything else I wanted to mention here. Those were the big ones. Um, they included a new handful of a slew of APIs that developers will be able to take care of, take uh, take advantage of, and that's about really it. I mean, that's the major things that I just showed you. That's probably the most. Uh, most important things to most end users. Um, so I think that I think they did a fine job in 4.0, and it really it really is going to offer a number of interesting things. And I'm interesting to see it's it'll be interesting to it'll be interesting to see how the next iPhone generation will reflect these changes in terms of hardware. Uh, if it'll have a front facing camera, so you can do like video chat. If it'll have better hardware, even uh, to support even better multitasking, make it smoother, and things like that. It'll be really cool and and interesting to see when they release the next iPhone. Probably announce that during Worldwide Developer Conference coming up in like a month or so. So be on the lookout for that. When this goes final, I will obviously look it over again, prob maybe even possibly on the new iPhone. Uh, and I'll let everyone know what I think. Right now, in terms of bugs, if you are a developer and you want to download this, I highly recommend you do it just so you can test it out with your application. Buggy, it's not really that bad. I've been messing with it for a couple hours now. And overall, I, I noticed a few bugs here and there. It, it kind of had to restart it once once or twice. But overall, it's not too bad. Anyway, this has been live.besttechie.net. And of course, this is just was an overview of the iPhone OS 4.0. If you want to check it out, uh, or if you have any comments about it, you can uh, 
if you want to check it out, you have to pay $99 for Apple, get a developer license, and they'll allow you to download it. If you want, if you have any comments, leave it in the comments section on YouTube or on my blog when I post this and look forward to hearing from you. Again, this has been live.best. Take it on. Until next time, we'll see you. And remember, remember, take care of your computer.